Hi, my name is Rick Eads. I work for Agilent Technologies. This is a series of videos where we're going to be talking about PCI Express 3.0. This part, this segment of the PCI Express 3.0 series is going to talk about the signaling for PCI Express 3.0. The signaling for PCI Express 3.0 that we use for transmitter testing is going to be based upon the compliance pattern. When you boot a root complex device as we have here, what you'll see is a Gen 2 compliance pattern. What we want to be able to do though is to test that compliance pattern at all of the different speeds if we're doing validation. For the purpose of this video though, we really want to focus on PCI Express 3.0. So what we'll need to do is to transition this, uh, the device into the different compliance modes so that we can test the speed, in this case 8 gigabits per second that we want to test. The key to being able to do that is the compliance toggle button. So when we press the compliance toggle button, we move from Gen 1 to Gen 2. So this is 5 gigabits per second. Now this is 5 gigabits at um, uh, 60B of the emphasis. When we press the toggle button again, we go into preset 0, which is now 8 gigabits per second. So continuing to press the toggle button will get us to additional states of compliance. That's P1, P2, P3 and P4. Now one of the things I want to talk a little bit about with P4 is the fact that the P4 is a special compliant state and this compliant state has no de-emphasis at all. De-emphasis is one way to think of it is transmitter based equalization. We equalize or add more energy to the transition bits compared to the non-transition bits and this helps us to compensate for the step response of the channel. You can see right here in the middle that the, in this case the ISI of the channel is not nearly equalized at all. So the purpose of the emphasis is to provide us with some compensation for uh, the loss of the channel and the fact that high frequencies are lost. So that's P4, that's no de-emphasis at all. What we really want to get to from a testing standpoint though is P7. So by pressing the toggle button we can move from P4 to P5 to P6 and then to P7. Now you notice in this case that the bits which would barely get past uh, the zero voltage level or the zero voltage threshold are now well past it. So this is something we can reasonably equalize <coughs> and generally within testing P7 is usually where we'll start with a standard root complex and, and most, most of the add-in card devices as well. From a PCI SIG standpoint, you only need to pass one of the presets. And we'll usually start with P7, and then uh, if we pass, then we're done. We're, you're, the device is okay, and we're able to move that device forward to other types of compliance tests, as might be uh, considered at a workshop. PCI Express 3.0 signaling runs at 8 gigabits per second, and this series deals with a lot of the elements of testing a PCI Express 3.0 transmitter. For more information, see the website that appears at the bottom of the screen.